Calvin UFO sighting has become one of the most controversial UFO mysteries in British history. And in this episode of The Unconventional Ufologist, we're going to look into this little known yet extraordinary case. On August the 4th, 1990, two hikers were walking close to Calvine, north of Pitlochry, in the Scottish Highlands. When quite literally, this incredibly large 100 foot diamond shaped aircraft appeared, hovering over the remote Scottish landscape. Over the course of 10 minutes, before it accelerated away upwards into the sky, the two hikers watched it in amazement, watched the number of military jets making low level passes near to the object, and managed to take six detailed colour photographs, one of which caught a military Harrier jet on it close to the object. The hikers, whose identities are no longer known, then allegedly took the camera to the Scottish Daily Record newspaper, who then in turn allegedly sent both the pictures and the negatives to the Ministry of Defence. The images were never published and the MOD took ownership of the photos. According to Nick Pope, ex-MOD UFO investigator, who alleges he was present when this case was brought to the MOD, states that tests done on the photos and negatives showed that the photos hadn't been faked and that they showed a structured craft of unknown origin quite unlike any conventional aircraft. Unlike standard aircraft design there was no fuselage, no wings, no tail, no engines and no markings of any sort. The photos had been taken in daylight and because of this the surrounding countryside was clearly visible, which enabled investigators at the Ministry of Defence to make some calculations about the mystery aircraft's size. The calculations shown that the craft was nearly 100 feet in diameter. Enlargement of the photographs revealed two military jets in some of the shots. Without any form of official corroboration it remains unknown if the military jets were intercepting the craft, escorting it, or that it was just sheer coincidence that they were in the vicinity at the time. And don't forget, if you like what you've been listening to or what you've seen, please like and subscribe. It may be a small click for you, but it's a giant leap for me and this channel. The case was taken extremely seriously, and because there was a possibility that the media may get involved, a memo was allegedly drawn up by the MOD, which read, Such stories are not normally drawn to the attention of ministers, and the MOD press office invariably responds to questions along well-established lines emphasising our limited interest in the UFO phenomenon. Nick Pope said that the memo also noted there was no record of Harriers operating in the area at the time and suggested the media should be told no definite conclusions reached regarding large diamond shaped object. Mr Pope also said that he assumed MOD intelligence specialists convinced the paper not to run this story, maybe through the use of a D notice but maybe through some other means and for whatever reason the paper complied with this request and the story was dropped. For those of you who don't know what a D-notice is, they are now known as DA notices for Defence Advisory Notice, and are issued by the Defence, Press and Broadcasting Advisory Committee as a means of providing official guidance on those areas of national security which the UK Government considers it has a duty to protect. The notices are widely distributed to editors, producers and publishers, and also to officials in government departments, military commanders, chief constables and some institutions. The notices have no legal standing and advice offered within their framework may be accepted or rejected partly or wholly. Pope also claims that photographs of the unidentified diamond shaped craft were shredded by the Ministry and it's because of this it's propelled the little known case of the Calvin sighting into one of the most controversial UFO sightings in British history. Former MOD UFO investigator turned whistleblower Nick Pope claims that pictures of the Calvin UFO were not released to the National Archives with the first set of Ministry's UFO files released in 2009, as should have happened. He went on to say that the Defence Intelligence staff sent these images to JARIC, that's the Joint Air Reconnaissance and Intelligence Centre. Now this is the UK's military centre of expertise when it comes to imagery analysis. These intelligence personnel come to the conclusion that these photographs are real, it's a solid craft and nobody has the faintest idea of what it is. Mr Pope, who investigated sightings for the MOD until 2009, said a blow up of the best shot had had pride of place on the wall in his department and later went behind his desk as his rank grew. Does this seem or look familiar? He said that visitors would come into the section, see it and ask what it was actually on the photograph. He would reply saying, it was the best UFO photo we've ever received. But Mr Pope said an internal cover-up over the image later began. 
His head of division came in, removed the picture, sent it somewhere for safekeeping, probably the shredder, and when the MOD's UFO files were made public, guess what? When they were asked about the absence of the case's pictures, the answer was, well, we don't know, it's gone. This was quite literally just after the United States assured the MOD that they weren't testing anything of theirs in our airspace. Now I'm not entirely sure in which direction I am with Nick Pope. He's hailed as a whistleblower. Yet, a whistleblower like many others, in so much there's no proof attached to his claims. He always appears to have been in the right place at the right time to know what was going on. But he can't tell us any more. Without mentioning any names, we know how many people have been pilloried by the press and people within the UFO field for unsubstantiated whistleblowing claims. Even more so when they're profiting from it, which, let's be honest, Nick has. I also don't buy the statement where he said that he told visitors that the pictures were the best UFO tow that we have. Was his department not a department that was dealing with matters of national security and then telling people willy-nilly about a case that was being looked into seriously? Doesn't sort of add up for me. Maybe this new era of so-called disclosure may allow him to present the evidence. And I'll gladly eat my words, but as it stands, I still feel he's part of the British MOD's ranks and he's throwing out bits of disinformation, like enticing sharks with chum. Since the sighting occurred, the two hitchhikers have never been traced or they've not even come forward. And back in July 1996, Don Valley MP Martin Redmond tried to get answers through a parliamentary question on the missing pictures. The MOD responded to these questions by saying a number of negatives associated with the sighting were examined by staff responsible for air defence matters. Since it was judged they contained nothing of defence significance, the negatives were not retained and we have no record of any photographs having been taken from them. But strangely, in late 1991-92, officials asked for detailed line drawings of the unidentified objects to be produced, which were released with the files. The documents on the case were supposed to have been released on January the 1st, 2021, under the 30-year rule, but the Ministry of Defence has now blocked the release of them until 2072, without any explanation. A complaint has been lodged under the Freedom of Information Act about the National Archives withholding the documents, and it's now under investigation by the UK Information Watchdog, the Information Commissioner's Office. The National Archives have refused to comment any further, and the MOD, surprise surprise, has refused to comment at all. Now before I wrap this up, what if, and I do mean IF in big capital large friendly letters, we get to find out about this case in a way similar to the Rendlesham case, where we got to hear about it after files became publicly available in the United States under the US Freedom of Information Act in 1983, long before any acknowledgement from the British military. What if the Intelligence Authorization Act, which is on the verge of releasing UFO files, I mean sorry I should get that right, the more politically correct UAP files within a number of weeks, that that presents documentation regarding this case, which will then allow people to force the UK government's hand. It may be pie in the sky, but it has happened before. See you next time. <laughs>